Yep, there it is. I'm going to be spectating first uh, Declan's match because we don't have the fancy schmancy uh, over the top both players see each other's cards shindig. Uh, we're going to be doing what we can here. And I'm going to switch off to competitors in terms of streaming. That way it kind of stays fair. Um, all our players, they're, they're good people. They're not going to peek at the stream. At least they shouldn't. And here we are, folks. We are kicking off. And it looks like Declan has decided to go with his mage. While, wow, Josh leads off with his hunter. It's a pretty even matchup across the board. But if you look in Declan's hand, he's got the volcanic potion. That's not something that Josh is going to want to stick around for. Uh, volcanic potion can easily wipe out an early board by hunter. Whew, it, it, it's going to be a tough match if uh, if if, Dom, if uh, Declan can get the hyper potion or the you know, volcanic potion off. And, and wipe Josh's board. Josh is going to have to play this very smart. He's not going to be. He's not going to want to overcommit to this. He's going to want to be very cautious about what he does. All right, so Declan drawing into a mana worm there. Um, not sure if he's going to want to drop that. Maybe drop the coin. Maybe go into a frost of a coin frost bolt. Power up the mana worm. Get a strong body on the field. You definitely don't just want to ping and pass here. Uh, by ping, I mean hero power. You definitely don't want to do that. You don't want to give Hunter too much to steamroll. Um, you want to put something on the field. Having a body out there is by far the best way to deal with aggro. Talking to Whisper earlier today, he uh, he and I were discussing his strategy a little bit, and I think we both agreed that Hunter was his most consistent lead against the three decks that Declan had brought. So Declan is going to go ahead, Worm, Coin into the Frostbolt. I think that's the best play available. It puts a 3-3 body on the field, and it gets rid of one of Josh's bigger bodies on the field currently. Josh going into 3 mana and 4 cards. How is he going to deal with this 3-3 mana Worm? He can't KO with anything on the board right now. Uh, maybe an Animal Companion coming out. If he really is scared of that mana Worm. Okay, he's going to go ahead and get the Jeweled Macaw out there. Interesting. John is 10 times the commentator I am. Thanks, Dalton. I appreciate that. I guess that's why uh, Mile High Sports keeps letting me back on the radio. Okay, so it looks like he's going to drop the Jeweled Macaw. Go ahead with the Hero Power. Hit face both times and pass. Um, looking at our hero's health. Declan is at 24 health while Josh is still at 30. Uh, Okay, he's going to make that trade into the bigger Alley Cat. Uses the Arcane Intellect. Such a good card. You know, a able to draw two cards. Only three mana. A, a great tool for Vance to cycle through their deck and get the spells that they need. So how is Josh going to come back from this? He's, he's really behind. And, and let me tell you why. Yes, he seems to have the least. He's got 30 health. Declan only has 24. But Declan's got a huge handful of cards. Josh doesn't know what those are. He also doesn't know that he's holding a Volcanic Potion. Um, Josh may be at full health, but Declan's got so many cards, so much removal, including that ice block. He's got a body on the field. He drew into the Gluttonous Ooze to take care of the um, Stragglehorn bow. So he's going to go ahead and fireball the Hyena. I think that was a smart play. You don't want to let that Hyena get too big. And Okay. Wow, what a beast. Wow, that's what Josh got from... I agree with Declan. It's amazing. He got an ordinary Dire Horn. From that. Let's take a look at that right there. Look at that bad boy. Five costs for a three attack, six mana. Okay, so Dickens going to go with the Forbidden Flame here. I think that's smart, considering you want to remove as much a Hunter as you can. But how is he going to deal with this Hatchling? He just burned his Fireball. Maybe he can take care of it with the Forbidden Flame next turn. He will be going into six mana, but that's an awful lot to commit, especially when you consider that the Hatchling's Death Rattle effect shuffles a 6-9 Diehorn with Taunt into the deck. Um, there's the Eagle Horn Bow from Josh, and he's not going to let that Mana Worm get powered up. He's going to go ahead and smack that Mana Worm right away, getting it off the board immediately. Sexy Golden Mana Worm, if I might add. The Hero Power, and he'll go ahead and go face. Yeah, I think that's the smart play from Josh. You want a Bum Rush Mage. You don't want to let them live for too long. In exactly three turns, he can go ahead and drop the Alexstrasza. Um... He can go ahead and drop the Alexstrasza, bringing his health back to 15. Josh has got to get his health, health down as quickly as possible. Just checking the chat here while uh, Josh thinks about his move. Check 
check the chat. The chat's kind of gone quiet. What's going on, guys? Okay, so a hound master onto the uh, kindly grandmother, making it a 3 3 with a death rattle, summon a 3 2. Not bad. Um, of course, we know what Declan has in hand. Um, he's got a lot of removal. Oh, man. So, uh,. We'll see what Josh wants to do here. If I'm if I'm Josh, if I'm Whisper, I, I really want to get that health down as quickly as possible. I want to set up for a big finish like a, a, a double kill command. Something to get rid of it as quickly as possible. But it doesn't look like he has any more utility on him. He's got the Galaka Crawler. I'll probably text that in there for pirates and against the rogue. Down to 11 health. And two turns away from the Alex Straza play to get his health back. Declan's in a spot here. I, I, I know I bragged most of the match that he kind of was in a was in the lead, but you know Hunter. That's one of the best things about Hunter is that they uh, they can just consistently steamroll damage. Uh, I've noticed that Tim is missing. Uh, obviously, he's not watching the stream if he if he's missing and hasn't played coach. Got, gotta say, he's probably too scared to play coach, but that's okay. Um, I'll go ahead and message him. I'll give him a couple minutes to respond. Uh, apologies, folks. I'm going to go ahead and check the, my friends list here. And I do not see Bradominus Rex on there. So looks like Tim may actually forfeit round one. Kind of uh, unfortunate, but as we were away... Oh, look at this. It looks like that Josh is one turn away from winning this game. I don't know what Declan can do about this. Just kidding. He's a mage. He's going to drop both of his secrets, the ice block and the ice barrier, giving him essentially eight more health in that armor. Um, Josh probably not going to want to just attack into it, giving him the armor. He's probably just going to use his hero power to proc the ice block on, but then Declan can respond next turn with the Alex Straza. What's so interesting about Declan's game so far is that he hasn't dropped the Volcanic Potion. He did pick up a Flame Strike, though. Be clutch for uh, more removal down the stretch. So Josh does indeed go for the Hero Power, procs the Ice Block. He's going to drop the Scavenging Hyena, and he's holding on to that last card that he has been playing since... He's had it in his hand since turn zero. Out comes the Alex Draws a play from uh, Declan. Well, Josh gives the well played. Does he have lethal in hand? Considering he already used a kill command, I don't know what he would do for lethal. If he's got another kill command, I, I guess he gets there, but he would have to attack into the armor. Declan suddenly back into this game, going on 23 health. Declan has played this game incredibly conservative, playing exactly how you want to in this matchup. He saved his hard removals. He, he's just played really consistently throughout the match. Uh, still no word of Tim. I'm going to go ahead and message our group here that Tim... Uh, So Coach is going to start off 1-0. I guess he'll win our uh, our first uh, round of the matches. Tim did not show up to his, his match. Uh, I'm really disappointed, Tim. I, I really was expecting you to, to kind of take this seriously. And um, I, I was excited to see what you could do. But, I mean, things happen. So go ahead with that five-cost flame strike. That's going to wipe out most of Josh's board. And now the Volcanic Potion possibly coming out from Declan. He is going to go ahead and Volcanic Potion, getting rid of the Layok. Oh, he's going to hit Josh's face for 8 damage with the Alex Draza and ping his face for 1. Like I said, folks, this is exactly Mage's MO. Bring you to the late game. Hit you with spells. We thought Josh had this game in the bag. Now suddenly it looks like Declan's in favor. Josh drops both cards. This, the Tundra Rhino, the Glocka Crawler. He's going to hit face for 4 damage. Use that hero power. He's 5 damage away from picking up his first win. And that's going to be game, folks. Alex Straza into the Pyroblast. That's exactly how Mage does it, folks. So t Josh is going to take the first loss of this set um, as Declan's Hunter, or Declan's Mage is able to take down Josh's Hunter. And when we look at the remaining classes from Josh with the uh, Control war or the Control uh, Pirate Warrior, not sure which one he's running there against the Priest. Um, if you're thinking maybe it's going to be a Pirate Warrior, do you really want to bring that against Mage? I don't know. Priest maybe against Mage. Sure, Priest has the ability to heal, kind of stay out of that KO range. Um, yes, Declan, you do keep that deck. Like I said, folks, we're all learning. 
So I'm going to go ahead and update the scoreboard here. But yeah, if I'm Josh, I'm thinking long and hard. You really, really wanted to take that first win. You wanted to get the mage deck out of the way. Now Josh has to continue to play with it again. Oh, goodness. That's, that's not going to be an easy thing for him to do. Um... Let's go ahead and see what Josh goes and counterpicks. So I'm actually going to be spectating Josh's game next, just to keep it nice and fair for everybody. And it looks like Josh has made his decision. And he's going in. Here we go, folks. And we're off on game number two of round one. And Josh decides to bring out his warrior. I guess since neither player watching the stream, I can drop the secret now. It is indeed a taunt warrior. Uh, Taunt Warrior coming out against Josh uh, against uh, Declan's Mage. Taunt Warrior has an incredible matchup against Mage. Mage has a hard time dealing with the armor of that Warrior can bring. It takes out though. Alex draws it a Pyroblast play. Let's see what adjustments Josh makes to get rid of this Mage deck. Checking the stream here, checking on a few things, making sure everything is good to go. I, like I said, always want to provide that uh, good quality for everybody. Okay, so kind of conservative starts for everybody. Um, Declan did get the turn one Mana Worm and the turn two Archaeologist, getting that secret to his hand. Josh is thinking long and hard about this turn. Okay, he's going to go ahead and armor up. And Declan's going to go ahead and in with another Mana Worm and a Frostbolt to the face. Wow, suddenly two 2-3 two, Mana Worms and a 2-3 Archaeologist on board after taking damage to the face and being frozen. Wow, Declan is off to the start of the century here. He Last game, you know, you can really see the experience that Declan has with Mage. Last game, he saved, he mulliganed correctly. He saved his big removals for when it counted. He played conservatively. He kept up with Josh. He saved the Alex Straza play. This game, he's kind of going opposite. He's kind of going really tempo. He's putting the pressure on Josh before Whisper can drop all of his big taunts. Oh. How, how interesting. I'm super excited to see what, how Josh comes back from this because he cannot afford to go down 3-1. Uh, to one. Uh, especially against a mage deck like this. Uh, he's got such a great matchup, too. It, this is a prime opportunity for Josh to bring it back. So we're going to go ahead and go to the bracket here. I'm going to go ahead and edit things and give uh, Coach our first win over Tim. Um, uh, Tim has just messaged me um, saying that his, his mom's car broke down. Um, that, that really stinks, Tim. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, praying that you guys get home safely. Uh, don't worry, Tim. There's still three rounds left. It, it's okay. You just got to win out now. And I, I believe you're the kind of player that can do it, Tim. I got faith in you. Okay. Dropping the Acolyte of Pain. Already down to 10 health. Man. And, and Declan has just put some serious smack on this. Josh is going to go ahead and coin to the Sleep of the Fishes. Clear Declan's board. Sleep of the Fishes is a great card. Does... Three damage to all damaged minions. Um, gonna get that extra draw with the Acolyte of Pain, but man, is he just in too far of a hole? He's already down to 10 health. Declan's still at 29. He hasn't played very many taunts. He hasn't played any taunts, actually. That's, uh, that, that's really upsetting. Josh, uh, Declan's just gonna go ahead and hero power and throw up a secret. So, not too much action going on there. Uh, Josh has gotta get going. He's got to put some bodies on the field. He's got to make some smarter plays here. He has a giant hole to overcome. Um, Josh is the kind of player that can do it, but man, that start. Can we talk about that start from Deckles? The double mana worm, Archaeologist, the Frostbolt, just insane amount of damage right off the bat. The fireball to the face. Declan did not want to let this get to the late game. You don't want to let Warrior stack up a bunch of armor. Your Alex draws it, become war useless. It it's really unfortunate. Um, but not the case. He put the pedal to the metal, and... Man, I'm, I'm super excited to see... Man, I keep saying that a lot. Sorry, folks. I want to see how Josh gets out of this, because I know he can. Let's see, check in the comments. <laughs> Likely story, I'm just too intimidating. I'm intimidated. intimidated to play coach. It's terrifying when someone has all the answers to everything. Oh, so the pain to a Volcanic Potion. 
Josh is going to go ahead and think about it. He's going to drop the Bluetooth Brave. Um, probably go ahead and armor up here. Yep. So I'll effectively, quote unquote, bring his health back to 13. Um, secret, we can assume, because we've seen public knowledge, we've seen the deck that Declan's running. We can assume that that's going to be the Ice Block. Declan now slowing down the game a little bit, going for some draw power, filling up his hand again with the Intellect. Drop the Archaeologist to get that secret from Deck. Man, look at Declan's hand. He's got five cards in hand, sitting at 25 health and an Ice Block. Th this is looking really good for Declan. Josh is going to have to play his butt off to come back in this game and come back in this set. Josh drawing into a Stonehill Defender. Uh, he has a couple different options here. With eight cards in hand, he can drop the Curator and, and get some draw. Or he can drop the Stonehill Defender, Fish for another Taunt. Uh, maybe something that can give him a little bit of armor, maybe an Alley Armor Smith. That's something he's definitely going to need. But he is going to go ahead and drop the Curator. He's going to fill his hand back up with a couple Taunts, the Hatchling, and his second copy of the Primordial Drake. Uh, thinking about going face. He is! He is just going to go ahead and go face. Bringing Declan's health down to 22. He's still sitting at the 13 health. Uh, and there it is. Declan's going to drop the Thief. But he's such a good card. Really underutilized last format. Became really popular when Angora Meta came out. A 7-7 seven, seven that equips the Staff of Atish. Staff of Atish after you cast a spell. Summon a minion of that cost. Wow. It's incredible value, especially when you consider how many high cost removals that Mage runs, how many spells they run in their deck. Um, if I'm Josh here, I'm definitely going to go for the Whirlwind Execute play. You don't want that Medivh sitting on the field, dealing damage, being able to take out your taunts. And it looks like he is going to go ahead and do that, activating also the Enrage on his Bloodhoof Brave. Uh, where he goes from here, I'm not so sure. He's going to trade the Curator into the Arcanologist. He's going to armor up and go for the Shield Slam. That was a really good play by Josh. You save your Execute for something big like an Alexstrasza. You use the armor that you had gathered up to KO the Medivh. And he's going to drop the Stonehill Defender for another Taunt on the field. Don't look now, folks, but Josh is at four Taunts. Three more, and he's got the Secret. When Declan at 17 health, he could swing this pretty easily. But there it is, the Meteor. And that's the card that I was afraid of for Josh. Meteor's just about going to wipe his field and summon a six-cost minion for uh, Deckles. Thankfully, he got the Ancient Harbinger, not something like Leroy Jenkins or a uh, Bloodhoof. Got the Harbinger, which is a good 4-6 body. Let's see how Josh comes back to deal with it. The Hatchling looks like a good play, perhaps. Uh, if he wanted to be really spicy, he could also drop the Gastropod and force one of his minions to crash into it, activating the Poisonous effect, or make him deal with it with a uh, removal. That's exactly what he's going to do. A cheap taunt allows him to armor up. And Josh is one taunt away from getting his uh, quest completed. Now, there's a little bit of interesting info there, folks. And I'm going to tell you why that was so important. Because the Ancient Harbinger draws a 10-cost mini from your deck. Now, we know Alex draws it costs 9 mana. But what's the only thing that mage could be running that's 10 costs? That could be Yogg Saron. It would not put it past me to have Declan running a Yogg Saron in a mage deck full of lots of spells. Um, especially when he's um, he's been casting so many spells these last couple games in a tournament setting like this. He got the Bitter Tide Hydra from the Firelands portal. Now, this is good and it's bad. It's great because obviously it's an 8-8. That's huge. And it puts a lot of pressure on Josh. But Josh also has the Brawl, which can get rid of just about everything on his board. Or he can choose to execute it. He can hit it with the Primordial Drake to deal the damage. I don't think that's the play, though. I think he has to get rid of the, everything else on the board, especially that 9-5 uh, Core Hound. I don't think that Drake is going to be the play here. But he's going to go for it anyway, and he's going to go ahead and use the uh, Sleep with the Fishes to KO just about everything except for that uh, Bitter Tide Hydra. So a decent play. He's going to deal 6 damage to Declan, but now Declan still has that 8-3 Beast sitting on the field. It just takes one Pyroblast, a hit to the face, anyway, a Polymorph. And there it is! The Polymorph! Not going to be enough for... Uh, Declan to win right now, but he gets rid of that taunt. That's why I didn't think the Primordial Drake was the play there. Uh, you have two brawls in hand. Why not use one of them? It's not like Mage is going to fill the board again anyway. Um, Josh does have the shield block and Sulfurus in his hand. 
Declan Wang has options. He does have four um, mana left, which leads me to believe maybe he has a fireball in hand that he's thinking about chucking at Josh's face. Is he thinking about maybe dropping a secret? No, he's going to go for the Cabal Courier. Checking in on the chat. Um, okay, and drawing into the Fiery War, actually, we really would have liked to see that earlier to get rid of those mana worms. Um, I, I'm giving Josh a lot of credit here. He is playing this game l like it's his last. He, he's doing a great job of staying in this game. He's gotten Declan down to 11 health. We only have to assume Declan has, one, the Yog saron and two, the Pyroblast in hand. Um, how is Josh going to deal with this? The Execute to the Bitter Tide Hydra is a good play. I think you absolutely have to shield block here. You need all of that armor. Otherwise, you're going to get KO'd by a Pyroblast. You're going to get hit with Fireballs. You're going to get hit with something that's going to bring you down to your minimum health. So he's going to go ahead and armor up. Um, using a shield block, he draws into another shield block. And now we've got to ask ourselves, does he want to shield block again? He most certainly does. Suddenly, Josh is back to 19 health. He's going to equip the Fiery War Act to go ahead and hit the Cabal Courier. That means next turn we could see Sulfurus come out for Josh. Uh, and if you look at it like that, the so Sulfurus and hitting it with the Fiery War Axe, that is lethal, which would proc the Ice Block. Declan wants to fill his hand back up, thinks he can drag this out a little bit longer. With the Intellect, he goes ahead and goes another Cabal Courier. Gosh, I really want to go back to that play. I really don't think that the Sleep at the Fishes was the play. I would have loved to see Josh use the Brawl. You see both Brawls still sitting in his hand X amount of turns later. Uh, I think that would have been able to save him a really good resource in dropping that Drake. You know he has the Polymorph for it. Um, let's see what he can do here. It's not over. They are at equal health. The quest is completed. Uh, the Alley Armorsmith could come in handy to get some more armor. Uh, you know Declan has lethal right now with the Pyroblast probably sitting in hand, as long as the Cabal Courier damage. Josh is taking his time thinking about this one. The Shield Slam is also an option. You know, one mana, you deal that two damage from the two armor onto the Cabal Courier. Um, you can then, ar then armor up, hit face, and then you go equip Soul Fierce and use your new hero power to crack the Ice Block. The problem is that it keeps you at that awkward 11 health, just at a Power Blast range, but we don't know what other spells and cards that Declan has discovered. Uh, we see that he does have... Uh, he's actually used both Fireballs, so you know that's not an option. An interesting play there, okay. Josh is going to go ahead and drop the uh, Primordial Drake, getting rid of the Cabal Courier. Smack face with the uh, Fiery War Axe. And drag us out a little bit longer. And there's the Pyroblast! Right to the face! Down to three health is Josh. Does he have a resource? He doesn't have any draw power in hand. Uh, what is Declan holding in hand? What has he discovered? We see uh, public knowledge. He has just used two fi frost bolts. He has used two fireballs. He still has a uh, Firelands portal left in deck. That would give him enough for game if he does have it. He also has the Yog Saron. Yog can do three damage easier than you can say peanut butter pie. Let's see what happens here. Gosh, this is just the same. It's going to come right down to the wire. Josh has enough for lethal, but that pesky card called Ice Block is going to prevent him from taking this game. I think Declan has lethal in hand. Why else would he have done the Pyroblast play right then and there? Unless he, he's hardcore bluffing and hoping that Josh is using his resources now. And there's the Die Insect, the new hero power. Ice Block does indeed proc. What does Declan have in hand? He's got five cards. We'll be drawing into six cards. Okay, Josh is going to go ahead and end there. Man. And there it is. Oh, he discovered another Pyroblast. So that's going to be the game. Declan with the overkill going with... 10 extra damage to face with the Pyroblast. That was a great match. I want to give both of our competitors a uh, big pat on the back for that one. That, that was a really intense match. D Declan, I, I can't believe how great of a start he got off to. The double Mana Worm, the Fireball Frostbolt to face. That was that was super intense. I'm, I'm really stoked just how great Declan played that match. Now, 
Josh is in a big hole. He's down 3-1. to one. All that's left is his Priest deck. He still has to get through this Mage deck he's been unable to defeat. And Declan also has a Pocket Shaman and a Priest in the back. Um, we can go ahead, since uh, we're on stream now, we can go ahead and reveal that this is going to be a Silence Priest for Josh. Um, how is he, he going to go ahead and deal with this? Going into the next match here. All right, we've got Anduin and Jaina, the Priest and the Mage. Um, we are going to go ahead and uh, switch over to Declan's hand again. We want to alternate between our competitors. So we'll go ahead and hop on over to uh, <laughs> whatever Declan's got going on for us. My apologies, folks. These guys are just moving at the speed of light here. I've barely got time to keep up. Um, again with the Mana Worm start. I think that's three games in a row. He started with the Golden Mana Worm. Josh is going to match his one drop, though, with a Northshire Cleric. Um, no coin into the Power Word Shield. Josh going to go, or Declan going to go right ahead for that Primordial Glyph. Yep, he sure is. Discover a spell, reduces cost by two, and give your Mana Worm plus one attack. I think this is a no-brainer here. I think you go with the Cabalist Tome, most definitely. Um, so much value, especially considering that it's a three-cost card. How great. And it appears the show button is going to stick around with us. That's interesting. But noticing that but noticing that Hearthstone has been glitching a lot more uh, ever since Ongoro dropped. I don't know if it's just me or if it's other people who have been experiencing this too. Um, eh, I guess I can just chill right here for now. Why not? I guess we're showing everybody a uh, good time. That was really bad. Um. Okay, so Whisper going to go ahead and the coin for the Cabal Talon Priest, giving the North Shark Cleric three more health. That's going to be clutch. Okay, Declan going into the Cabalist Tome. What a great turn three. Debating on what he wants to do now. He's just going to go ahead and hit face with the Mana Worm. Let's go ahead and restart that. That was really getting on my nerves. And we're back. Josh taking his time thinking about this one. This is his last deck. He's on the verge of elimination here. What is he going to want to do? I wonder. So Declan going to go ahead and buy himself some time with the Amir image, Zero Two Taunts. Thinking about dropping the uh, Gluttonous Ooze just to get a body on the field. Josh went ahead and went straight in with the Northshire Cleric. Uh, wants to do some steady damage to this mage. Doesn't want to let it get to late game. He's lost both late game battles so far. Uh, chat's kind of dry. What's going on, guys? Are we uh, stream doing okay? Are we all right? Josh will drop the uh, Humongous Razor Fin. That's a great card. Really big secret. Priest Rock. Okay. Arcane Intellect, top deck for Declan. Uh, Deckles, probably going to want to throw up that Ice Block just in case Priest uh, gets off a, a one-hit KO, which they're more than capable of doing, especially with the uh, Razor Petal on board, the Razor Leaf. Doubling that health, changing health to attack. That brings 16 damage right to the board. That is lethal if Josh has those cards in hand. Declan going to go ahead with the like so, Josh can take this game right now. He most certainly can. If he's got the silence, the double health, and the inner fire, he's got lethal. Don't know if he has all those cards. It looks like he has just enough mana to complete it too. 
I don't know about that play, folks. If I'm Declan, I'm definitely throwing out my ice block. I don't want to have any chance of getting O-Code by a Silence Priest. Declan does have the Meteor in hand, so he can get rid of it next turn. If there is going to be a next turn. Josh taking his time thinking about this. I don't think he has... Uh, I don't think he has lethal in hand. Otherwise, he would have played it by now. Instead, he's really pondering about it. We be playing. Joe is tough to beat. Yeah, Joe is tough to beat. How do you think I feel? I grew up with him. Come on now. Josh going to go ahead and he does indeed get the silence off. Oh, but he's going to drop the Ancient Watcher. Sure, looks like he does not have lethal in hand yet. Uh, so Declan going to be able to meteor next turn and clear a couple threats off of the board. Josh taking his time thinking about this move. See, because a Silence Priest, you really want to be able to go in and get the Oko on your opponent. But also at the same time, you, you really just want to be careful with that. Because if you burn too many resources, you've got nothing left. And that's just about an automatic lose. Top deck into a Firelands Portal. Wow, three Firelands Portal. I wish I was as good as Declan. So Declan's going to do the smart play here. He's going to Meteor the Northshire Cleric. That cuts off Josh's draw as well as his highest attacking minion on the board. Um, Josh still has that Razor Fin. I'm oh, sorry, the Razor Leaf Silence, though. Um, let's see if he can do something about it. Also, silence that Ancient Watcher drawing into the Purify. Silence a minion. Draw, draw card. Getting that card draw going. Um, brings Declan down to five health. Um, four health. <laughs> if I'm Declan, I'm not still not too concerned. You've got the Ice Barrier. You've got the Ice Block. He's going to go ahead and throw up that Ice Block, which, in my humble opinion, he should have done a long time ago, but what do I know? The double secrets here, this is this is concerning for Declan. Only because he's now down to essentially 10 health. Josh is one damage away from proccing that ice block. And if not, he leaves him at one health for the ice for the ice block. He's gonna proc the secret with his uh, acolyte. Bringing up that eight armor. I'm sorry, he goes to 12 health. So still still a couple turns away from Josh. Being able to proc that ice block, Josh is going to go ahead and crash all three minions into the armor, bringing him back down to three health. Thunder Shark Clear, it comes out. Josh will go ahead and heal one of his minions, perhaps, and draw a card. Josh, again, taking his time thinking about this. You can tell, I don't think it's nerves per se, but you can tell that Josh is really considering his moves here. Doesn't want to throw too much on the board. Uh, Declan's still sitting at the ice block. He's got the Alex Draws in hand. That is going to be so huge. He's guaranteed to get it off next turn unless Josh runs a tech like an Eater of Secrets in his deck, bringing him back to 15 health. Oh, that's unfortunate for Declan. Getting a doppelganger oh. off of the Firelands Portal. Normally an amazing card in Shaman, but when you just summon it, you don't get the Battle Cry effect. And that's only going to put a 2-2 two, two minion on the board. Unbeknownst to Josh, Declan has the Alex Draws in hand. But Josh has got to be thinking he's doing a great job. He's got him down to 1 health, proc the Ice Block. Josh is just going to go ahead, heal the Razor Leaf, get the draw power. Josh is going in. Here we go. He's going to double it. Now, there's a good play for Josh. He's going to go ahead and double the health of the Razor Petal. Sorry, the Razor Leaf. I can't 
remember that card's name for the life of me. And then go ahead and use the Faceless Shambler, a great card in Silence Priest to copy those stats. Declan, again with the top deck, is going to top deck into the Arcanologist and put up another Ice Block. Why Alex draws it when he can do it next turn? Thins out his deck a little bit. Can drop the Courier, can play this a little bit slower now. Josh still has a humongous board, and I don't know if Declan's going to be able to necessarily come back, but Declan's uh, surely making it a game here. <laughs> Throwing in the North Shot click will proc the Ice Block. Declan with the uh, sorry emotes, uh, trying to perhaps tilt Josh a little bit, make Josh think that he has something in his hand that can immediately change the game. Um... But really, even if he goes down to 15 health, Josh has one inner fire. That's going to be enough to take the game. Oh, Josh is going to go for the Potion of Madness onto the Cabal Courier. Crash it into the Arcanologist, essentially wiping out all of D uh, Dyklin's field. Wow. Josh will drop another Ancient Watcher and probably silence it. Yep, he'll go ahead and purify, silence it, draw a card. God, look at that beefy hand. He's used a lot of resources, but he's continued to cycle through his deck effectively. Again, drawing another card, increasing the health of his minions. Doesn't want to be in that Flame Strike range. I don't know how Declan's going to get out of this. Even if he Alex draws us his face, and he's going to go ahead and concede with the Pyroblast to face, and that's it. Wow. Josh is going to go ahead and take this game pretty convincingly. From turn one, he was able to effectively handle all of Declan's threats. Um, gosh, it just kind of makes you wonder, what if uh, what if Josh had gone with the Silence Priest first? Uh, we could be talking about a whole other set, but now Josh brings it back. It's now 2-1. to one. Uh, Go ahead and update the score here and jump into spectating Josh this time as we'll be able to see just exactly what he's drawing into, what he's running in that Silence Priest. Um, checking the chat here, checking our group chat, seeing uh, any updates on the stream, on other matches are going. Uh, all I've heard is that Joe is tough to beat, and I don't disagree with that. Um, if I'm Josh, I'm feeling really good. You you struggled so hard to get over that mage deck, but at the same time, you also just plowed through with a silence priest. So we're going to go ahead and spectate Josh now and uh, see if Josh can bring this back. I'm interested to see what Declan chooses to counter Josh's silence priest. It's going to be a priest ditto, folks. We've got Taranda versus Anduin. Uh, we don't know what priest Declan is running. We can only assume it's Silence. So he did say his favorite uh, deck of all time was Dragon. So let's see what happens here. Looking at Josh's opening hand, it's it's not too exciting. He, could, he I guess he just went ahead and uh, kept all the minions in his hand. He does get a Shadow Visions, but really you want to be saving that for the Elise pack that Elise drops, or to you know get the last piece of the puzzle. Once upon a time. <laughs> Only if he admits ponies is a terrible bad card game will Josh win. I I don't think ponies is a healthy card game, but it certainly is a lot of fun, and I do love my ponies. Almost wore a pony shirt on stream, but I think it's dirty. All right, so a little bit of a dilemma for Josh. He can't go in and just start uh, buffing up that Ancient Washer. He needs to silence it first. Uh, Acolyte comes down, and uh, yeah, we may have a Dragon Priest here, folks. The Never Sprite Historian. Dragon Priest is not dead, contrary to popular belief. Declan dropping the Radiant Elemental, such a good card, reducing the cost of uh, spells, and that's exactly why he's able to pull off that Shadow Word of Pain, getting rid of the Acolyte, destroying Josh's draw power early. Josh can always Potion of Madness this, but it doesn't necessarily clash with anything. Josh just really has kind of an awkward hand. I'm not sure how he wants to deal with this. Probably just drop the Razor Fin and pass, maybe? Terabad. Well, yeah, it's, it, I will say it's not healthy. I'm not going to say it's Terabad. It was a lot of fun. Uh, now, Dragon Ball Z, now that's a Terabad card game. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw that salt out there. 
Josh will go ahead and pass, just dropping that razor. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Razor leaf. <sighs> AKA Terra Bad. So, I'm enjoying coaches shit talking in the, uh, in the comments. Really do appreciate it. Okay, Declan's gonna go ahead and drop the Midnight Drake, which gains plus one attack for every other card in your hand. Gives it the power word shield. Suddenly, that's a force to be reckoned with. It's a 7 6. And the pressure's on. Josh, again, top decking into that Northshire Cleric. Doesn't have a whole lot of spells. He has no silence. Uh, he's gonna go ahead with the power word shield, probably just to get the draw power. Maybe then buff up the Faceless Shambler copy. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Copy the stats of a 410 under the Faceless Shambler with Taunt. He knows that Priest cannot target effectively uh, a 4 attack minion. He's hoping he's able to stall out the match a little bit with it. Declan seems calm. Collected, and you gotta remember, folks. All of his spells what still cost one less. That radiant elemental is sat on the field, though now I think he's thinking about crashing it in. But his spells do cost one less. Josh has not found an effective way to deal with it. Go one. I don't, uh, who's go? Like Go Go Rangers or Pokemon Go? Because let me tell you, folks, Pokemon Go definitely did not win. It won for about a month, but let me tell you, as a competitive Pokemon player, that game was awful. Joe! Oh, Joe! Joe won! Wow! Congratulations, Joe! Um, I do know that Dom was able to take game one from Joe, and uh, Joe messaged me and said, you know, oh, Dom got it, but uh, in playing it out, Joe was actually able to sneak off with a win. Congratulations to Joe, and uh, good game to you guys. I'm excited to hear about how it went. So we'll go ahead and update the bracket there. Okay, getting rid of the taunt effectively. Josh finally drawing into the inner fire. Unfortunately, he still needs to silence these minions, which is also going to get rid of the power word shield buff. He's in a really tight spot here. Of course, it's not impossible to come back. I mean, this is priest after all. He's gonna go ahead and drop the North Shark Cleric. Maybe he wants to start buffing that. No, he's gonna go ahead, do the Potion of Madness, take away that Radiant Elemental, crash it right into the Drake. He's going to heal it, get the draw, and crash it into the Drake. That was a great play by Josh. That's exactly the kind of things I like to see from Josh. That's the kind of plays that are going to bring this game back. What is the sexy overlay? Uh, depends on what overlay you're talking about. If you're talking about the uh, overlay on Hearthstone, uh, this is something that Dalton actually created. I'll give credit where credit is due. Uh, Dalton created this, but I kind of tweaked it and put the Hearthstone uh, spin on it. What do you guys think about the uh, icons up at the top, how they gray out when a class has been defeated? I, I kind of really like that little touch. Uh, love some feedback on the overlay. <laughs> Going with the bookworm. Oy. Yep, that'll get rid of a uh, mini with attack of three or less. Another reason why Priest is a pretty good class, especially when it comes to removal. Josh is finally going to cave. He's going to use that Shadow Visions. Not sure he picked up what he wanted. He do still does not have a Silence in his hand. It's hard to play Silence Priest when you don't have a Silence. Coach is saying that it needs to pop more hard to see. Okay, noted. We'll go ahead and uh, make those changes. Maybe make it white. I think, I think a good white or, or at least a brighter color will make it better for next time. Um, thanks for the feedback, Coach. Josh dropping the Ancient Watcher, going to go ahead and heal face. Um, every turn that passes by, Declan is in a better and better shape. The late game is is really where, where this control Dragon Priest shines. Josh wants this game to be over by just about now with that, oh, with that uh, one turn knockout, doubling the health of the minions, um, or just X out the classes. Okay. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll look into that too. Maybe uh, getting some Photoshop up in here, Xing out the classes instead of graying them out. We'll definitely look into that. Declan going with the inner fire, making that a 6-6. Six, six. Crashes it into that, and he's going to go for the dragon fire potion, wiping the board completely, except for that bookworm. 
Things are looking really sticky for Josh. He's only got he's already used up three of his uh, big minions that he likes to buff. He's got one minion left in hand. Still no silence. Uh, it's a card game, folks. Hearthstone, even though it's played on the computer, if you don't draw your cards well, you just can't win. Josh going for a spicy play here. He's going to go ahead and uh, use the inner fire onto the bookworm to bring it back down to a 2-2 two -two instead of a 6-2. Um, a great, smart play, but at the same time, it, it's probably a little more of a desperation play at this point. You really just killed one of your win conditions. You do have another inner fire in hand, um, but really you wanted to use that for your buffed minions. Uh, Declan going for the Elise play. Shuffle a Ungoro pack into your deck. Man, that's awesome. Gosh, I love that card. If I, if I was rich and I had the dust, I would definitely make that card. Is someone injured? Draws into another Talon Priest. He could use the Talon Priest to buff the Talon Priest. Um, Declan just has such good board position right now, especially with the Angoro pack. We can only assume he's got maybe a Shadow Visions in hand to go get that pack. I'm sorry, I don't read. He's actually used both of his Shadow Visions, so he'll have to draw into the pack. Something that Josh needs to keep in mind. So, uh, Josh will take the Potion of Madness, take the Northshire Cleric, crash it into Elise. That goes ahead and gets rid of the Northshire Cleric for Declan. And if you're Josh, you, you gotta drop uh, a minion here, right? I mean, you can't just have absolutely no tempo going into the next turn. And he'll go ahead and do heal face, and... At the same token, if you drop the Talon Priest and... Declan gets rid of it. Uh, that That's it. You really don't have any minions left except for maybe Elise and one more um, one more of those Razor Leaves. Josh taking all down. Okay, he's just going to go ahead and pass. He's actually not going to drop the uh, Talon Priest. The Dragon Operative. Man, what a great card. Going to discover a dragon because he's holding a dragon. Cycles. It's a 5 6. Teclan exerting so much pressure right now. Going to go ahead with the Power Word Shield onto the Operative. Draw a card. Heal up Elise and uh, deal some damage to Josh's face. Josh top backing into the North Shark Cleric. That's a minion he could potentially buff. You wish to live forever. And he will. He'll go ahead and use the Talon Priest onto it. Declan has, you know, plenty of damage to go ahead and, and get the KO on it. Um, I don't know how much more Josh wants to dig. He only has three cards left in hand. He is running low on resources. He just hasn't drawn well. I mean, it's not like he's been playing poorly or anything. He just hasn't drawn well. It's gonna go ahead and buff the North Shark Cleric again. And you maybe use that inner fire. If I'm Josh, I think now I, I want to throw... It, it, he's already committed to it. He's already buffed the Northshire Cleric. If I was him, I'd probably go for the Shadow Visions, get the double health, see if you can swing something real quick. Pray that he doesn't have a Shadow Word Death. We haven't seen a Shadow Word Death from Declan. He's probably holding on to it. But Josh is going to go ahead, actually heal the Bookworm, bringing it back up to four health, and getting the draw with the Northshire Cleric. So, uh, I'm going to take a break from commentating this real quick to inform everybody that Tim uh, and his mom were actually in a car accident. They uh, they were hit while they were being towed away. Man, what a what a freaking frack and unfortunate turn of events for Tim. I I'm I'm real sorry about that, Tim. I don't know if you're gonna if you're watching or if you're gonna watch this afterwards, but what what a really shitty way to spend your your Thursday evening. So I'm praying for you and your mom that you know, things get better for you guys and um, come play some Hearthstone, man. I mean, there's, there's no better way to come back from a terrible night than hanging out with your buds. Um, get back into it round two. Win out, go 3-1, and top cut in our first ever Hearthstone tournament. So Josh going to go ahead with the Shadow Visions, which I, in my humble opinion, I think he should have done this last turn. 
Um, Declan with the silence, though, probably would have just nullified any buffs that he had to it. <laughs> Nothing a lawsuit couldn't cure. That's what I like to hear, Tim. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my stream to make sure I'm not missing out on any sexy comments. <laughs> Dragon and GG. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Josh is going to go ahead and silence the uh, Lyra. Couldn't agree more with that play. Lyra Ooh. is, in my opinion, a better auctioneer. Uh, maybe if they cycle auctioneer, they'll make a Lyra for uh, <laughs> for Rogue. That would be quite exciting. And now, and now Josh is drawing all of his secrets that he really didn't want to see Late game, he really wanted to see those early. <laughs> Sexy comment. Thanks, Dom. Free from Amber brings out... Oh, Isera coming out here. Or as Joe likes to call it, Yurza. And that's going to be just about it for Josh. Well played. Way too much of a dominating board. That's going to be GG, folks. I'll go ahead and wait till Dawn. Declan makes it official, which he does right there. All right, that's going to be it. That's how uh, That's how it falls. Declan's going to go ahead and take this. Uh, two games to none, or two decks to one, none. Declan just had all the momentum that last game. He he drew the best. He had all of his pieces that he needed. Uh, Josh didn't see any of his silences, and and that's Hearthstone. That that just simply is what it is. So Declan's gonna go ahead and get that victory. Um,